everyone and there are three mistakes that you could be making with Tilman CSS. I'll show you what those mistakes are and then I'll show you how to fix them. All right, so first big mistake is conflicting classes. So here I have a button and this is the only thing I have on the page right now so we can pay attention to just this button. This button has a background color BG Blue 500 and what happens sometimes in bigger components is that you're gonna clash because you could be adding another background color class. Right? For example BG Red 500 and now because I have the Tailwind extension installed I get this green squiggly line so it warns me that there is a conflict here. Right? So make sure you have that extension installed. Now usually the, the problem will persist because if you're using a button most likely when you use the button you still want to be able to pass in a class name from here. Right? So I can still pass in a class name here that is BG Red 500. So if I pass a class name like this to my own custom component and now I have to accept it here. So I'll accept a prop here class name and I'm using TypeScript here so that's I will quickly type this up here. Type button and props don't use interface i have a separate video on that make sure you check it out class name let's say it's optional it's a string all right so then i want to use that here all right so this is awkwardly possible right because we can do a template literal here and i say awkwardly possible because the syntax here is going to be quite ugly so i'll just convert this into a template literal let's see if i made a mistake yeah so what we want to do is here we want to add that class name prop all right so now i'm adding this class name here from the prop so that's going to be this bg red 500 here right but we don't get a warning here we don't get any warning hey pay attention there's a clash that we got before so now if I save here we actually don't know what the result is going to be it, it turns out to be red but honestly we don't really know what it's going to be so it's unpredictable right now All right so now it becomes red but what happens if I make this a different color let's say I make it BG amber All right so there's also an amber color in Tilman CSS if I save now it becomes this amber color but what happens if I restart the dev server so I'm gonna uh, uh, close down my dev server here gonna restart it and it's restarting I'm just gonna refresh and we're gonna wait yeah here it is so here you can see when i refreshed when i restarted the dev server it became a blue color again even though i'm passing in bg amber 500 so i expect the background color to become this one right so usually when you're writing a class name here you expect to override the the default styles right but now you can see for some reason it has become bg blue 500 and even if i put this class name not at the front of this class list but let's say i put it at the end right because in css there is some rule that the latter rule wins right so maybe if i put it at the end of the class name you know this somehow wins and that's not how it works by the way but maybe we think that so now you can see i saved here actually and it's still blue right so this is completely unexpected and it also is very tricky because it works differently during development and then when you restart the dev server so this is completely unpredictable all right now why does this happen let me quickly open up this button here in the dev tools we can see here that this bg amber 500 it does indeed get added to the class list here and but we also see this bg blue 500 so why is it blue and why is it not that amber color well tailwind actually Actually generates a style sheet for us right so remember with CSS you have the classes but then in a style sheet you still need to select those classes and apply those declarations so uh, Tailwind generates that style sheet for us so if we scroll down a little bit we can actually see that style sheet to see what's actually being applied on the page here so here we have a BG blue class and here we have BG amber so if I click here we can see the actual generated style sheet now you can see that the style sheet that's being applied to this page you can see it has both it's bo it's selecting both of these classes so BG blue and BG amber but it has put the BG Amber rule in front of the BG Blue rule, right? Most likely because Tailwind is generating the style sheet based on an alphabetical order, right? So even though we pass in BG Amber here in as the class name prop and we put it at the end of the class list, in the generated style sheet, it's this BG Amber class is selected before the BG Blue class, right? Because when Tailwind generates a style sheet, it's going to just do that by alph alphabetical order. At least that's my guess. So that's why we see Blue here because in CSS with the cascade the latter rule wins. So to solve this we need something that can take the entire string of classes here and can sort of intelligently resolve these conflicts. And I'm using a background example here but it can also be a little bit more subtle. For example here we have this these padding classes right padding vertical 2 padding horizontal 4 right but I could also pass in something like p5 right so not not specifically horizontal or vertical but for all sides p5 right this is now also clashing with these in a way but it's a different class name when we pass in p p5 here and this becomes p5 this clashes with this and we need some way to resolve that properly as well right so we need something that can intelligently merge all of these classes right so it doesn't matter if i put this at the end or at the front and let me change this back to bg amber i'm passing in bg amber and i'm putting i'm putting that 
prop here at the beginning of the class list, if I save, it stays blue, right? So this uh, this order in the class list does not matter. It's about the order in the generated style sheet, right? The selectors and the actual rule. All right, so second big mistake that I see a lot of Tailwind uh, CSS coders make is with dynamic classes. So maybe you have some kind of state, right? Maybe pending, set pending. Let me import this. Right, so let's say we have pending. Now, if it's pending, we want to give this a, be a different background color. Right, so here, what we could do is when it's pending, maybe it should be a gray color, not this blue color. So we think, well, BG and 500, that should stay the same. It's only this color here. So we can sort of do this dynamically, right? So we can say if it's pending, it should become a gray color, right? BG gray. Otherwise, it should still be that blue color. Now I'm getting an error because we're using use state. I'm using a Next.js application here. So let me quickly convert this into a client component. I have a separate video on uh, mistakes that you could be making with client and server components. Check it out. And here uh, I get an issue here because this should be a string. All right. So now let's see. So now what, I, of course, my attention here is that when it's pending, we should get BG gray 500, right? And otherwise we should get BG blue 500. So now pending is currently false. So we see blue, but now if I turn this to true, what will happen? And actually what we see now is that <laughs> this BG gray is not being applied. We actually still get the BG amber here, right? So if I just remove this for this example here, so now I only have BG gray or BG blue 500, right? But when we do this, we don't, this doesn't work, right? So in Tailwind, this doesn't work. You cannot dynamically create these classes like this. And I see a lot of beginners, they make this mistake, especially junior developers on your team are going to make this mistake. So we also need a solution that can deal with these dynamic classes. All right, so the third big mistake actually is very similar. It has to do with conditional classes. That's essentially also what we're trying to do here. So what you can do is instead of writing it like this, you can write it a little bit differently and it will work, but it, the syntax is quite ugly. So you, you, make, you make the entire thing a conditional here. So we're going to say if pending, then the entire class should be mentioned like this, right? Otherwise it should be BG blue 500, right? So if we save here and now you can see it works, right? But it's very ugly syntax to put all of these conditionals here with the rest of the classes. So ideally we can pull these conditionals out somewhere here so that you have the base classes. And then after that, you can have the conditional classes. All right. So the solution to our problems is a library called Tailwind Merge. It's been exploding in the past few months. It's going to intelligently merge our classes. We can do dynamic classes, conditional classes. So it's basically solving all of our issues here. And they show some examples here. So here um, it's always about the last class that wins, right? So if you have a conflict, it's just going to take the last class, which is actually in line with our expectation. So whatever we want to prevail, we just need to put it at the end and Tailwind Merge will make sure that the last one wins. So let's try this out. So I'm going to install Tailwind Merge, Tailwind Merge. It's actually a, a dev dependency, but in Next.js, we don't have to write dash dash save dev or dash D. Next.js will do that automatically for you. So we don't need, we don't need to, we can just install everything as a dependency, as a normal dependency. So I've, I've installed this package now. And now what I can do, I can import a named function here called TW merge from Tailwind merge. Okay. So now we can clean this up by quite a bit. So what we're going to do is let's go back to our example here and let's clean this up. So I'm just going to actually, let's take these base classes. I'm going to comment this out so you can see what it looked like before. So we have class name, we still have class name, and now we're going to use that function, right? So we need to use curly braces so we can call a function in here and that's going to be TW merge, right? It's a function. And in there you can pass multiple arguments. So first, typically what you want to do is you want to pass the base classes, right? So we, we want to apply these classes by default. And then the second argument can be um, the class name that you expect as a prop, right? So when you allow people to pass in classes like this, they should override the base classes, right? And TW merge will make sure that if this comes later in the class list, that it will prevail over whatever the base classes are. So here we can actually, the base class can be, for example, BG blue 500. And then if we're passing in BG amber 500, which is what we're doing here, this is going to be later here. And so TW merge will make sure that the BG amber actually wins. So if I save here and now you can see it's actually amber, right? And then if you want to do some kind of conditional, you can just say if it's pending and then we can even use this uh, logical and operator, it should become BG gray 500, right? So now we are actually creating a very nice reusable button here that can take care of whatever the person is passing in the class name and we can have these conditionals, right? So now you can see pending is true actually and the button is indeed gray, right? So that's really uh, really clean, right? And you can also, if you want to, you can dynamically create these classes as well. So what works is if you want to do it like this, like a dynamic class, BG, you know, pending, if pending is true, it should become gray. Otherwise it should become uh, blue, 500. That's right? so these dynamic classes. If I save here, it's gray because pending is true. If I make this false, it's blue, right? So now this works as expected, but I don't really like the syntax of these dynamic classes like this. So I will just have a more, uh, have a conditional more like this. So let me do this, right? So this will make sure that 
if you have these classes that conflict, if I inspect here, you can see now it has only one BG class here, BG Gray 500, right? BG Gray 500, because that's coming from this here. Pending is true. And so we're going to get this one. If I make this false, um, we're passing in BG Amber still, right? BG Amber 500. This comes later. This comes after BG Blue here. So if we look at the, the code here, you can see um, we only see BG Amber here, right? So there is no conflict here anymore. TW Merge will just uh, strip this class from the output, right? If I pass in nothing here, I don't pass, I don't pass anything as a class name here and just save here. Well, we should get blue. So let's see. Yeah, we still get blue. All right. So here we also have these padding, right? So we have padding vertical to padding horizontal four. So what if I pass in padding, uh, padding five, right? So this is also a clash, but a more sophisticated clash, you could say. All right. So now if we go here, you can see it has indeed made all of our sides padding five, which is what you would expect, right? So if you want to set a padding for all sides, you would expect it to override these two as well, right? So you can see those PY and PX are not here anymore, only P5. So it's, it's really sophisticated merging. Even though the, the two classes are different, it can still it still detects that, that they have uh, conflicting styles and it will merge them as you would expect. Right? So they also show some examples here of some more sophisticated merging. Right? So here you can see if you have P3 for all sides 3, but horizontal 5, and this 5 comes later, it will still preserve that as well. Only when you would put P3 after PX5, you would get P3 only. Right? So you can see it's already quite uh, tricky to do this properly if you would have to do this by yourself. Right? So it resolves non-trivial conflicts. Right? So here, if you have this inset class in Tailwind and then another one, right, a negative one, it knows how to deal with that. Even bottom auto and inset, two different classes essentially, but it can still detect that they have that they have a conflict. It will know which one should prevail. Right? Also with these hover and focus states. So if you have um, hover P2 and then you say hover P4, it knows P4 wins here, right? Because this comes later, right? That's all about the order now, right? So before the order didn't matter in the classes and that's a problem because it makes it whole, it makes it unpredictable. But now it's always the latter one wins. Right, so the latter one wins was already true for the generated style sheet, but now also in our list of classes, the latter one wins if there is a conflict. And also here, if you have hover and then focus, and then if you and then if you do focus and then hover, it knows that this one should win. Uh, it works with arbitrary values, so basically custom values supports the important modifier, so you can still use this. Right, so here it's another tricky one. So if you have important P3, important P4, and then P5, well P5 comes later, but these two have the important rules, right? And of those two, this one comes later. Later. So, so it uh, merges this like that, right? So we solved all of our problems here with this one library. If you don't want to write TW merge, you know, throughout your code base, it's a bit too long. You can actually alias this as TM and just call this TM or will we'll work the same way. All right. Now, maybe you've seen people use the CLSX or the class names library to do something similar. So CLSX, for example, also allows you to do these conditional classes as well as those dynamic classes, but it doesn't do that intelligent merging that Tailwind merges that Tailwind Merge does. So Tailwind Merge not only allows you to do these conditional classes and dynamic classes, it also does the intelligent merging. I would argue it's better to use uh, this library. Now there is one small downside to Tailwind Merge, which is you can't use objects here, right? So I can pass a string here. I can even pass an array, right? Maybe you allow the consumer of this component to pass in an array of class names, right? So that works. But the one thing that doesn't work here is object. So if you use an object here, maybe you're used to this from CLSX, this would look something like this, where you have a class that you want to apply only when some condition is true. Right? So this is how you would do conditional classes with CLSX. You would have an object and then you would have the string that you want to apply if something is true. But that's not possible here. right? So this syntax of an object is not possible. And that's actually a deliberate decision by the Tailwind Merge author. And there's a bit of, and there's a small discussion here on GitHub about that. Uh, but the author has decided to not do that. And well, is still thinking about it. But uh, for now, it's not possible. The, the benefit of object, by the way, is that it can look a little bit better, right? So if you have a lot of base classes and then you have a lot of conditional classes, it makes it a bit easier to observe what the base classes are and how they are separated from the conditionals, right? So it's just an aesthetic difference. I don't really consider it necessary to use uh, an object for conditional classes, right? I, I like the syntax with the logical and operator here and the library author also prefers that. But if you have a lot of classes, if it's a big component, you could certainly make an argument that the object looks better and therefore you may decide to use use CLSX in addition to this, right? So you can actually use both of them together. And the library author actually shows an example here. So you could use CLSX together. So you would basically first use CLSX and then the output of that, you would pass that to T 
to the Tailwind Merge function. Now I'll have a separate video on this with CLSX, so make sure you are subscribed to my channel and uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. All right, so one last thing, of course, typically you also want to allow the user to pass in other uh, other props here that are typical for a button. Maybe you know you want to be able to type a submit or something like this. All right, so you want to be able to grab these other uh, props as well. So typically you 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 grab the rest like this, right? Props, and then you would just spread them here on the button. Right, that's just an aside in case you would you was you were wondering about that. All right, so you would spread those attributes on here like that. Right, so it's a really useful utility function, this Tailwind Merge, and I use it in most of my projects. So hopefully this is going to be useful for you as well. If you liked the video, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. And my React Next.js course is coming out soon, so make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter so you can get notified and get a discount when I release it. I also have JavaScript and CSS courses. So Tailwind, for example, is very easy to pick up if you have already mastered the underlying fundamental, which is CSS. And also for React Next.js in general, it's very easy to pick up if you've already mastered JavaScript. So check out my courses on those as well. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.